to uh, Deputy Eugene Murphy sharing with our so Deputy Scanlon. So my time Scanlon. to okay, Deputy well, Scanlon, yeah. Ken Corla, and uh, I don't, after those three passionate speeches from um, Deputy Martin Hayden, Deputy Tom Neville and Deputy, uh, Deputy McLaughlin, I, I think there must have been a Fine Gael Parliamentary Party meeting. You're on the election foot and there's no doubt about it. I have to say, I have to say that uh, some of the comments are, are shocking, but I have enormous respect for Michael Ring because when I approach him about issues in my own constituency, uh, he responds. He responds usually in a positive fashion. And I think it's been said over and over again this evening, uh, he certainly has, you know, a passion uh, for rural Ireland and, and wants to improve things. Um, and I know that my colleague here, Deputy Scanlon, and other members and, and some of our local authority members always welcome good announcements, as I did for my own county in, 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 in terms of towns like Boyle and other places uh, in recent times. And of course, Minister Ring travels through that town of Strokestown on many occasions, where we'll be looking for a few more Bob of you now uh, down the road. Um, I suppose, in fairness, there are a lot of issues, uh, you know, against rural Ireland. And, I'm sure, Minister, at this stage you've listened to so much of it, you don't, you don't want to hear too much more of it this evening. But there are a lot of factors and a lot of issues which have changed, I acknowledge that. And I'm not going to dismiss everything about the government and uh, what hasn't ha happened in rural Ireland. I, I take the good with the bad, there has been some good things, there has been some disappointing situations. Um, there is no doubt about it. There is no doubt about it. Rural Ireland is under enormous pressure. And there's no point in any speaker here coming on saying and giving the impression that all is hunky-dory and that we don't have a crisis. You travel through my town this evening, you travel through Strokestown, you, the reality is there's so many vacant buildings, and I know the Minister himself acknowledges this, we have to repopulate those towns and villages. You have to have football, footfall, if you have footfall, you won't, businesses can't survive. Uh, Out-of-town shopping centres have done enormous damage to towns and villages. And yes, online shopping is a huge issue. And online shopping is going to close down more businesses. And another issue which has done a lot of damage, and I have, Minister, before spoken about some uh, financial solution to this, but bypassing many of our towns and villages has been a disaster. An absolute disaster. Now, we have to upgrade our roads, and I know people have to get... Uh, you know, from the west of Ireland, they have to get freight. We want the N5 or we want the N4, and we need those roads, so I'm not saying that at all. But there never has been an address of the situation uh, by this House, or by anybody in this House, uh, a scheme to look at, you know, investing something in the town and villages that are left behind when a, when a town is bypassed. And it's fine if you maybe have a hardware or a chemist or a supermarket. You will survive. But if you have a filling station, or if you have a restaurant, you will not survive in many towns once it's bypassed, or a paper shop. And we have seen that in places like Ballad Green, and in other towns and other places. So we do need a scheme minister of, you know, being able to invest with the local authority. Some, if there could be a tourism product in that town or village. So let's be able to invest in it so that that town and village has a future. Now, there are, according to, to recent statistics, there's about 600,000 people living uh, in towns between 1,500 um, and 10,000 residents. So that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people, really, I suppose, for the rural areas. And, of course, we have, Minister, if you've often said yourself, we have an imbalance in, in, in the population growth in this country because we have huge population growth in the east of the country and we have very poor population growth in the west of the country. And we have a solution here. We have to invest and reinvest and increase our investment in the west of Ireland to get rid of that imbalance. I was listening to some research this morning where it stated that 150,000 more people will reside in Dublin in the next three years than is there now. 150,000 people more. And it's bursting at the seams as it is. And the, the reality of the situation is we have, to, we have to draw more business, we have to give incentives to business, down into the West and Midlands, you know this yourself, Minister, I know you're quite passionate about it. And we have to get jobs, as has been said, over and over and over again this evening. We have to get more jobs into the region. I suppose if you look at our own region, we were very lucky for many years. We had Bournemouth, we had the ESB, um, we had the Burlington industry there in Clundra, just over the bridge in Tarmabarry, which employed 1,000 people. 
We had Glanby and Ruske employing 600 plus people, and we've lost them all. So we really are in an area that has to get investment, and this is where I come before I conclude because I want to hand over to Deputy Scannon. The Hidden Heartlands is going to be a very important factor and feature in developing our part of the country, Minister, I'm sure you'll agree. And I'm glad to see that there is investment in that, and I think there's four or five workers now employed in it. But we have to tap into that, and we have to develop tourism, and we have to take into centre parks and the developments on Sleeve Bond and other places, and sell tourism, because that is what is going to be the reality for many parts of rural Ireland. And it's going to be a challenge, and a huge challenge, but it's something we've got to do. Um, the, I acknowledge this investment, I acknowledge this uh, lot of support, uh, I acknowledge you, Minister, yourself, you know, involve yourself, you throw yourself into this, and, and you do a good job. And just, uh, I suppose, a figure that I've used on many occasions here in the past in relation to one of the problems we have in rural Ireland. In my own county, up to 900 people per day get on a bus, get into their car, go on the train to Dublin. At four o'clock in the morning, many of them, I see members of my own family at it, and home at nine o'clock at night. It is no family life. So really, we have to try and get jobs, and we have to give incentives to get jobs down the country. I'm going to hand over to Deputy Scanlon. 